Hello and welcome to our last webinar for 2023 year in review. My name is Carmen Lampson and I will be your host today. For today's webinar, we will be using Slido embedded apps for polls and Q&A. Look for it to pop up on the right side of your screen. You can also participate on your mobile device by scanning the QR code on the screen right now. Be sure to stick around to the end today for a chance to win, for a chance to enter our drawing for some cool WebEx prizes. The the drawing will have a quiz leading up to it. It's a fun quiz, don't worry. Um, so make sure to pay attention in the webinar so you can find your answers throughout the webinar for the quiz and qualify for some cool WebEx prizes. So good luck with that. Leading today's webinar is Cisco Distinguished Speaker and Senior Developer Evangelist Phil Belanti. And joining Phil is Developer Evangelist and App Hub and Partner Support Aficionado Joe Zanini. Along with them is Adam Weeks, WebEx Developer Evangelism Team Manager. This team, along with our developer support team, will help answer any questions you have during the Q&A session. So don't be bashful, drop them in. And without further ado, over to you, Phil. Thank you, Carmen. And hello, everybody. Welcome to our final webinar of 2023. Uh, the content will be pretty light in this one. Just a little retrospective of uh, all the great things that were added to and introduced to the WebEx for Developers platform. Um, so it was really kind of a fun exercise putting this all together, looking back and seeing all the great things that uh, you know were introduced this year. So um, this one actually should be pretty interesting, I think. Um, but. Uh, as Carmen mentioned, my name is Phil Belanti. Um, you know, I work for the uh, the WebEx Developer Evangelist team. Uh, so we do a lot of these webinars here. Uh, you know, I've been at Cisco since like 2015. Um, you know, from uh, acquisition from a company called Tropo. Um, but uh, I've been you know, supporting the you know, the WebEx APIs really uh, since they you know first introduced the REST APIs. Uh, you know, probably end of 2015, early 2016. So. Um, you know, I've seen these APIs, you know, raised from a pup, and uh, now they are really, like, I think one of the best stories about WebEx. Um, the agenda is pretty simple. We're going to talk about some new things that we introduced here in 2023, um, things that we updated in 2023, and then we'll talk about some other activities, you know, particularly around uh, the live events that we're at. Um, but... Uh, as you can see, we we started off with a with a Slido poll that was already open. Um, you know, this kind of segue into our our first section here. Let me uh, go ahead and pull that one up. So, which of the following scenarios best describes how quickly you adopt new technology? Um, I I think I'm with the uh, the sixty four percent. I like to, you know, read the reviews and. And all the buzz before I get it, um, but um, I know, like for example, um, many friends and my wife who want to be the early adopters. They like to get things, like be the first person to have it. Um, but uh, but yeah, essentially here, you know, this is kind of good, um, kind of starting off this next section here, uh, which is going to be, you know, uh, what's new in twenty twenty three. Um, and, you know, in 2023, it saw the official launch of the, the WebEx Contact Center for Developers Platform. So I thought we'd start here, since this is our biggest and most important edition of the year, in my opinion, anyways. Um, but the WebEx Contact Center for Developers, um, you know, they have their own developer portal. Um, and that's located at developer.webex-cx.com. Um, and that was introduced as part of the launch of the platform. Uh, so very similar to uh, the the WebEx Classic developer platform, which is developer.webex.com, um, but just after WebEx, it's a dash CX. Um, and, uh, you know, just like the original WebEx for Developers portal, uh, you're going to find a lot of great resources here, uh, like samples, quick starts, tutorials. Um, it also has interactive documentation where you can try out the API endpoints with the built-in REST client. Uh, so... Um, you'll see it has a lot of the familiar look and feel as the as the classic developer platform, um, but it's dedicated to uh, the WebEx Contact Center platform. Uh, 
But when we uh, say WebEx Contact Center is an open platform, like it says in this slide, we're, we're basically referring to the ability uh, for the developers to tailor every step of the customer and agent journey. Uh, you know, while there are certainly a lot of helpful features you get right out of the box with WebEx Contact Center, you know, in reality, there's no two companies that take the same approach with customer service. Um, and that makes customization very important. Um, but the end goal is to give your team everything they need to provide amazing customer service within your contact center. Um, there's several different realms in contact center that have developer interfaces. You know, so the first uh, category uh, of this is building on top of uh, what we have already on the platform. Um, so, you know, just to level set a bit, you know, the main personas within the contact center area are ad administrators, supervisors, and agents. And the idea basically is to give all of these personas access to tools and an open platform that's um, going to improve their productivity and the customer sentiment, more importantly. Uh, but developers uh, can then build on, improve upon, um, and customize existing features to ensure uh, the customer or business needs are being met. Um, so, for example, you know, on the administrator side, um, there are, you know, over 100 canned reports, you know, available as part of our analyzer you know, uh, our analyzer offering, which gives you real time and historical data. Uh, however, uh, these reports can be customized for different verticals and aggregated based on business logic uh, that's, you know, uh, applicable to your customer. Uh, you can also create wall boards, you know, and that's like a, a visual tool when displaying like essential real time performance and call center activity metrics uh, to, to the agents and to the managers through graphs. And charts and notifications, things like that. Uh, but integrations can also be created to help with workforce optimization, um, so they can appropriately staff queues for busy or slower periods, or for quality management, where you can make sure agents are properly trained for specific customer interactions. Uh, so the agent supervisor and desktop, you know, it's also customizable based on the needs of the business. Uh, you can also build in different areas of WebEx Contact Center. So, you know, if we look at this screenshot here in the purple field where it says, you know, plug in your app here, um, this is the agent desktop. Uh, so in this scenario, you know, you know this, this is the same place where they're, you know, attending to a customer call. Uh, and inside this area, they can use web applications to better serve the customer. Uh, and these web applications are embedded in the agent desktop and they're called widgets. Uh, but there are also connectors available and some others coming soon to allow contact center to be used within another service or your CRM. And by building with WebEx Contact Center, you know, we provide developers with comprehensive documentation, sample code, SDKs, a fully licensed developer sandbox for building and testing on all the interfaces. Um, there's a bunch of blog posts that share how-to strategies, white papers, more. Uh, but uh, just like the classic WebEx uh, platform, our developer support team is here to help you with any questions or challenges you face along the way, so you're not alone. Um, but all of this adds up to a very robust platform for developers to start building on top of or building within it. You know, so you can start doing that today. Uh, now I'd like to take the time to uh, introduce uh, Roger Northrup. Uh, he's the CTO, of one of our great partners, Mutare. Um, and he's here to tell us about their contact center integration uh, that they build, uh, that they built and listed on the WebEx App Hub this year. Uh, so Roger, um, if you can uh, tell us a little about your app. Hey, thank you, Phil. And I'll, actually, the entire Cisco WebEx team that's up there, they've been fantastic for us. So I want to thank you for having us here today. And like you said, yes, my name is Roger <clears throat> Northrup. With, uh, I'm the CTO, and I was able to uh, build on top of the contact center along with our team. And uh, you can see in the app hub there, the, if you search Mutari Voice Traffic Filter, uh, you'll find us there, and you can click on Learn More. And if you really want to get a hold of us, we can go even deeper than what we're going to talk about today. Today is a very high level overhaul of call flow works and what we did to integrate into the flow designer that's on the WebEx contact center. Now, let's go and take a look at that flow, Phil. So the first flow, what a customer does is they have an incoming call, of course, and in this case, you can see three different security points. And Mutari sits on the very, very front of this security point, which means we take a look at the traffic that's coming in, 
we send it off to one of our proprietary databases with an API call. So none of the RTP traffic or the, the traffic that's coming in actually leaves the contact center. It's only an API call. And then we use a bunch of metadata to decide whether or not this call is good, it's a spoof, they're being attacked. And so we'll stop that at the very, very beginning before it even gets to the next step of a CMR, CRM lookup. Okay. So let's take a look at how we did this integration. On the customer flow designer, as you can see here on the left-hand side, uh, this would be like a normal call flow in the flow designer of a customer. And so when the call comes in, it goes to the next place, plays a message, and then sends it into uh, the agent queue. Okay. What we do on the next integration slide here on the left, Phil, is we drop in three pieces. And so, so like I said in the beginning, this is an integration that we work with the customer uh, to do this, okay? Once these three pieces are in here, they are now secure, just like that voice traffic filter in very front, they're there. Then there's another flow within the flow designer that we work with the customer that we've built. So all of our tech is built on top of the WebEx contact center, okay? Now let's take a look at the different layers that we put inside of our voice traffic filter. You can see at the very top that there's a stir shaken. Uh, we're not a replacement of stir shaken. And once the Cisco WebEx contact center begins to uh, provide that data to us, uh, then you can use attestation scoring, you can use the TN validation, and the customers can you know, tune the way they want uh, this particular voice traffic filter to dynamically handle traffic as well. And then there's a secondary layer that we've put in there, which is called the proprietary database. Uh, this is where all the metadata is held. So we know of you know, good callers, uh, reputation scores, impossible numbers, all that's taken care of within this proprietary database. And so when we feed back the API call to the WebEx contact center, there are choices that can be made, whether it's gonna be routed to a specific agent queue, that's really important to handle it because it's kind of a questionable call. And then the KPI metrics, which the, the administrator lives and breathes on, uh, we can begin feeding back information about what this call is really about, whether it's sketchy or thought, you know, if they want to send it to a security queue, or the agent then gets a pop and says, oh, this is kind of questionable, I need to really pay attention. Because uh, ultimately, the human still has to recognize if a call does get through, how, how to handle that, right? And then there's the threat radar. This is where all the machine learning and the AI takes place. So we understand heuristic pattern matching. We know the ebbs and flows of the network. If something is an anomaly, uh, we'll dynamically handle that call and reroute it or drop it or send it to the next step, uh, which could be a voice capture. And I'll talk about that in a second. The next one are custom rules. Uh, this is where the customers get into the interface and they're able to tweak uh, types of uh, rules that they want. It can be from the calling number to the call number. It could be inbound, outbound. Uh, it could be CNAM, it could be any of that, and they can decide what to do with the call on a simple drag and drop and save it, and now those calls can be routed throughout the contact center properly. And the, the voice capture is highly recommended. This is like a reverse Turing test that takes place. So the caller has to put in a randomized set of digits, and also in the next gen that we're working on, it's more straight voice and AI type stuff that we're looking for. And one thing to note when all you developers are making things like this is create a fail open solution. That means at any point in time within your app, if something goes wrong, the call is never dropped. And that's really important. And Mutari has been around for about 36 years, building voice apps, security apps, all that for a very long time. And this is very crucial that you do this so that the call never gets dropped and it gets into the contact center. And lastly, the customer has access to a dashboard. Go ahead, fill the next one. This is just one part of the, of the interface that we've got for the customers, but they also have all the tools to, to decide how to set up rules with the route, how to dynamically do things, uh, setting up a rules factory that, you know, automatically other, other people in the organization are stopping these calls. Would you like to have it stop to your number? That kind of stuff. But this shows you exactly what's taking place throughout a period of time and reporting and it's very powerful in order to be able to see this now and expose how you're being attacked because we even look at the most attacked numbers in that within the organization and you can actually deal with it. So Phil, that's a real high level of the Moise, uh, Mutari voice traffic filter. And we, again, we really appreciate your time to be able to show a developers online uh, some of the really cool things you can do with the WebEx Contact Center. Thank you very much, Roger. Yeah, exactly. And the, you, know, you can build great things just like this 
um, and, and obviously much, much more too. Uh, but yeah, this is just one of our, like I said, one of our great integrations that we have, to, you know, since our, our, our launch we had earlier this year. So again, thank you very much, Roger. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so let's take on the, um, on the theme of, of, uh, new announcements of 2023, let's switch gears now to the, uh, the WebEx, uh, traditional platform. Um, and now we're going to talk a little bit about our embedded apps framework. Um, so I want to call uh, attention to some brand new features. They came to the embedded apps framework, uh, particularly presentation mode and sidebar apps. Uh, but just in case you have never heard of embedded apps, uh, these are custom web applications that can be added inside different WebEx contexts, such as meetings or spaces, you know, very similar to you know, what we just talked about in context center widgets. Um, you know, these are, uh, web applications that developers built, and then they can put them inside different contexts in WebEx. Uh, so previously, uh, embedded apps for, for meetings, you know, were mainly for collaborative use cases, you know, where participants all use an app together in the same session. Uh, but now we've opened up some additional use cases with presentation mode, which turns the embedded app console into, you know, in an alternative screen sharing solution. Uh, presentation mode essentially provides a read-only version of the initiator's app within the meeting. Uh, this is particularly helpful for organizations that, you know, have disabled traditional screen sharing in WebEx, which is, uh, now here is very common in the finance industry. Um, so this gives them another way to do it. And it's also for sharing content meant to be glanced at during a meeting. So instead of a full screen share, you know, the, the share stands right inside the console window. Uh, so maybe you can put that information on there. Uh, that meant to be glanced at as opposed to a main part of the meeting. Uh, but there's also a, a brand new type of embedded app, uh, which res resides on the, on the left rail uh, over by shortcuts inside of the WebEx application, and that's called sidebar apps. Um, and they're tailored for single users. Um, you know, these allow third-party apps to run inside the WebEx client, but outside of collaborative spaces or meetings. So again, sidebar apps are for scenarios where an individual needs access to an information, you know, without leaving the WebEx app. They don't have to worry about context switching. They're doing most of their work in WebEx already. You know, let's bring some of these web applications in there that they can access right inside that same app. Um, there's also a specific type of sidebar app uh, for WebEx calling uh, where it can receive calling events like the caller ID, and allow apps to perform things like CRM lookups. So uh, if it's a known customer calling, the sidebar app can present information about that customer inside of WebEx. Uh, so the caller context can be displayed immediately. You know, and that's commonly known as a screen pop. So, uh, you know, think of this kind of as like a light contact center functionality. Um, and, you know, that's right inside of uh, the WebEx app uh, sidebar applications. Another new application type that uh, was introduced in 2023 uh, is called WebEx service apps. And that's meant for important integrations that run administrator tasks uh, or compliance tasks. Uh, so service apps have the ability to request, you know, administrator or compliance permission to access the REST APIs. And that reduces the dependence on a single user's author uh, authorization, you know, and kind of mitigates the, any kind of risks associated with their app. So instead, you know, uh, the actor for the API calls is a, is a machine account, and that's provisioned inside of the, you know, inside of a uh, WebEx organization, you know, and so this ensures your, your business automation flows will continue to run smoothly, you know, and that's irrespective if, you know, the, the administrator who, who was using that or built that, you know, it leaves the company, you know, it, it, it actually runs on behalf of your organization, and it's not tied to any particular user. Um, but just about any kind of administrator app can be created as a service app, but it is particularly useful for reporting and, and compliance applications where it can run on behalf of the organization, you know, allow it to run and operate uninterruptedly, you know, no matter who comes and goes at the company. Again, so that makes it really ideal for mission critical apps that's going to run on a long term basis. And then rounding out the, the brand new announcements in 2023 is the, uh, the WebEx beta program. And that's supported by the WebEx uh, beta platform. 
Um, so here you can have an opportunity to access the WebEx uh, Deliver platform APIs, SDKs, and other features before anyone else. Um, and, uh, you know, as a participant, you can have access to our latest features, um, you know, which you can test out upon in, in, uh, registration. So just take a quick look at that. You can sign up for the WebEx uh, developer beta uh, right on the URL above, uh, cs.co slash WebEx developer beta. And then you can navigate to different areas of the site you know, through the top menu bar. And that's where you're going to find the activity notifications based on particular betas that you have joined already. Um, and then you know, further on down the page, you're going to see all of the active developer features that are in an active beta. Uh, and then you can participate as a beta tester right from there. Um, and then you know, once you're part of that beta and been testing it, you can quickly submit issues or view the list of known issues. Uh, you can also view and submit new ideas. You can submit praise and you know questions uh, you know pertaining to that beta feature. So everything can be done right there. Um, so you know if you haven't done so already, I encourage everybody to sign up for our developer beta. Um, and you can see in the screenshot we already have you know a, um, you know a calling SDK and a meeting SDK, uh, and those are active right now. So on to our next Slido, where we go into our next section. Which tech innovation are you eagerly waiting for? You know, I think I originally was going to say the hoverboard from Back to the Future, but I think I can really use that auto laugh feature in WebEx. My jokes don't always land. Oh, the food synthesizer. I can use that right about now. And well, surprisingly, only 8% of people don't, uh, you know, don't have time for laundry. I thought it'd be higher than that. Yeah, but yeah, this is all kind of things that we're eagerly waiting for here. Um, and I know a lot of people have also been eagerly waiting for, you know, certain updates. So um, let's jump into the, some of the updates that we saw in 2023. Next slide here. So uh, again, we're gonna, in this section, we're going to go through some of the WebEx developer updates that were rolled out this year. Uh, we're going to start on the API side of things, uh, which what I believe is where WebEx really shines. Um, so in, in 2022, the calling APIs, I think, had the most velocity of any of the, the WebEx products for expansion and, and new endpoints and things like that. Um, but we continued to improve on the calling platform in 2023, you know, kind of fine tuning much of the deployments that happened in the year prior. Um, but starting with the, the provisioning APIs on the administrator side, uh, you know, we saw like uh, the uh, our devices and workspaces APIs. Um, we saw some updates there. You know, they have the ability to to list and add um, calling workspaces and uh, devices through the APIs now uh, for onboarding uh, devices by MAC address and managing call settings uh, with third party device activation, uh, and then also manage device line key templates. So those can all be uh, done now through the API. Where many of that stuff was only available inside of Control Hub. Um, and then the uh, the user call settings API there, um, the new APIs can get users prefer answer endpoint and modify users prefer endpoint. So those are those are just completely new APIs that were introduced this year. Uh, we've added API support for an announcement repository. And that's like a centralized repository of media um, at the uh, at the Oregon location levels. Um, you know, different features can utilize this media for things like audible announcements being played. Uh, you know, when certain events or situations happen. Um, and then in the call, user call settings API, we've added get users music on hold endpoint and modify users music on uh, endpoint. So those were uh, things that were rolled out in the APIs too. Let you configure music on hold uh, settings for individual users. And that was, um, and then on the call control side, uh, the APIs dial answer, retrieve, pick up, and barge in um, have all been enhanced to include uh, optional uh, like an endpoint ID attribute. 
Uh, and that's basically, um, basically to specify uh, the endpoint for uh, ID for each individual call using the call control API option. So this would be instead of using the modify user's preferred answer endpoint API. Um, and basically, you know, this is allows you to do it a little bit more granular per individual uh, endpoint as opposed to by user, which encompasses all of their endpoints. And then finally, uh, on the um, the call report side of things, um, yeah, and I think you know this is probably I think my favorite one of all the releases here. Um, it's a great new endpoint for programmatically creating custom call reports, and that's the detailed call history API. Um, where before, like I think all the the reports that came out of WebEx, you have to wait like you know a full day for um, before you get your call dispositions. Uh, but now you know, with this with this API. You can actually get your call disposition, you know, five minutes after the call is done. Um, so you can start building your own reports right away, really. Um, so again, a lot of great things that are happening on, uh, on the calling platform side of things. Uh, a lot of really great updates. And you know, the meeting APIs also uh, saw a lot of great updates this year. You know, and particularly APIs for WebEx webinars, which I know a lot of people have been waiting for. A lot of organizations waiting for this. Uh, and, you know, the best part is we made it very easy to work with webinars. You know, the same WebEx meetings API that, you know, that were already around for quite a while can now manage WebEx webinars. So it's the same exact endpoints you use. So by simply changing the settings parameter to webinar equals true, you can now manage webinars using the same thing. So there's really not much not much difference between WebEx meetings and webinars as far as the APIs go. Um, but the, um, the WebEx webinars uh, now support specifying whether to send like email to registrants. Uh, a webinar host can also generate individual post event survey links uh, for different users. And that's using the get meeting survey links. Um, you just have to specify the user's email right inside there. Um, so again, a lot more uh, programmatic control. Um, and then um, the the meeting user APIs, and many of these updates contain functionality that are carried over from the soon to be end of life XML APIs. So you know a lot of uh, developers and organizations have been waiting for some of these features before they've migrated to the modern REST APIs, and um, you know, and now we were happy to introduce a lot of these things. So. Uh, a new attribute called start link, you know, that's added to the join meetings API. The start link attribute can be used to start a meeting as the meeting host. Um, uh, again, that was available in the XML stuff, but now it's available in REST. Um, as a host or co-host user, you can now list in progress meeting breakout sessions. That's the list meeting breakout sessions API. Uh, and then uh, you can admit per, uh, participants into meeting breakout sessions using uh, admit participants API. Uh, and then also as a meeting user, you can now create a meeting, update a meeting, and list meetings, uh, all with the audio connection options. So that's now available within the REST APIs too. And then we also have updating, uh, updated meeting administrator APIs. So um, as an administrator, or even as a, a normal meeting host, you can now uh, list meeting attendee reports on a site. And as an administrator, you can also reassign meetings to a new host using reassign meetings to a new host API. So appropriately named API. We also added some new properties in uh, WebEx buttons and cards that were you know, uh, announced or earlier this year. Um, so this is on the messaging side of things. Uh, the first new one is vertical content alignment property. It lets developers fine tune the uh, the alignment of the content within the card elements. Um, so the values can be top, center, or bottom. But when a value is not specified, uh, that vertical content alignment is inherited from the parent container. So if there is no parent container, um, it basically defaults to the top. Uh, but the the next is the uh, is the action toggle visibility property. And that lets developers define the actions that toggle the visibility of specific card elements. So you can kind of hide and, and show them. Um, and then, you know, it allows uh, the information to be more organized in a user-friendly manner. Um, but, uh, and lastly, in uh, Buttons and Cards 1.3, we also introduced input validation. 
Um, so now if you have some web forms inside of a card, WebEx can ensure a field is being populated correctly. And uh, another update brought us the WebEx status API. So you can now access our status page uh, via the API. Um, so status.webex.com is, is the, the web page home uh, for that. Uh, but if people want to build their own dashboards, you know, they can actually now use this API. Um, you know, stay updated on any service disruptions or maintenance, you know, and keep your communication running smoothly. Uh, developers can, you know, programmatically get these statuses, you know, from the entire platform, or if they want to, just for the WebEx components that are most important to them. You know, again, they can add these, and build their own dashboards or however they want to do that. You know, we also had some updates to uh, a couple of our SDKs. Let's jump into that. First, um, you know, I, I think the ones that saw the, the most uh, updates are our mobile SDKs for iOS and Android. And this shouldn't be a big surprise because, you know, a year or two ago, uh, we optimized our SDKs to share the same code base as the mobile client, the, you know, traditional WebEx mobile client. So, when WebEx mobile gets an update, you know, the SDK is going to get it immediately. So that's, you know, so it should be no surprise that we saw the most feature velocity here. Uh, but we had basically uh, three different version numbers that got uh, released this year. Uh, in the first, it was uh, when we released 3.8 of the SDKs. Um, uh, this has included two new features that we're pretty excited about, you know, the meetings only SDK, which is just like a lightweight version of the SDK. For you know, uh, for people that are only going to be working with WebEx meetings for their integration, um, so just intended for uh, for projects that are strictly using meetings. Um, but we also introduced uh, in the uh, in, in the traditional SDK WebEx calling supported in 3.8, and that enabled mobile apps to make and receive calls from the WebEx cloud. So that's where it was uh, the calling was first introduced into uh, our mobile SDK. And then when um, you know 3.9 arrived, uh, they introduced uh, a lightweight calling only SDK. So, so now for integrations that are using our SDK that is strictly for calling, uh, they can use that calling only SDK. Uh, and that's uh, in that version we also introduced push notification, and that's a solution that's supported through a new webhook. Uh, so now you can send push notifications through uh, to a mobile device through that webhook. And now the most recent release um, is uh, 3.10, uh, and uh, that brings even more calling features. Uh, the SDK now supports up to three call transfers, and it added a, a slew of other advanced WebEx calling features, and many of those are to satisfy uh, essential mobile use cases in industry like retail, banking, you know, any others where customer involvement is required on a mobile device. We also made some improvements to our JavaScript browser SDK. Um, you know, and the two main ones, you know, particularly the SDK now supports uh, TLS four four three, and that's for situations where you know firewall is uh, is blocking the default ports in uh, in your network. Um, so this you know helps to you know have a, a workaround solution for those firewall situations. Um, but another update uh, adds 1080p uh, video for both, you know, incoming and outgoing video. Uh, so that brings the full WebEx HD experience to SDK applications now. Um, so you, if, if you uh, used an SDK application like previously to this year with the video, you're going to notice, uh, you know, a market improvement on that. We also had a lot of updates for um, the developer portal. Um, and then I'm talking about the traditional WebEx developer portal. Um, so again, the, the WebEx for developer portal is continually being updated. Um, after a pretty big refresh in 2022, uh, we added a lot of new content this year that's organized in a much more intuitive fashion. Um, so as you can see in the screenshot over here on the right side, you know, finding the essential documentation for the different components of WebEx platform 
is much, much easier now. We have a nice card base layout. Uh, again, you know, we're always making new additions, improvements to the portal. Um, but, you know, we definitely welcome your feedback. So um, feel free to share some feedback with our developer support team about your experience on the portal. Um, you know, you can reach from in the support tab that's right on the portal itself. Um, but some of the other things that we've added to the portal, uh, you know, we talk about the introduction to WebEx service apps earlier. And now, uh, we, we, well, along with that launch, we also released a, a developer guide. You know, it gives you all the in and outs of using service apps. Uh, we also have a, a developer guide for Instant Connect. And that's uh, like a web RTC based product that we have. And that can be integrated into customer workflows to quickly create meeting links uh, for hosts and guests via an API. So we published a new developer guide for that in 2023. It has a complete walkthrough of how the Instant uh, Connect API works, you know, what it does, and it even has like a step-by-step -step example using Postman. So that's really helpful. Um, uh, and then we also have like a, the call provisioning APIs, you know, and, you know, this guide really helps developers better understand the components of the provisioning platform. Um, the, the administrator APIs for provisioning um, and the user onboarding that those, con uh, that those correspond to. And there's also uh, a developer guide that we released for the webinars API that we talked about earlier. So all of the, the, the new things that we added specifically to manage web, web, WebEx webinars, uh, there's also a really handy developer guide published uh, on our developer portal for that. And then on the embedded app side of things, we publish new design guides for all the different contexts that WebEx apps can be deployed in. So messaging, meeting devices, and sidebar. Um, now you can follow those design guides um, so you can make sure that your, uh, you know, your embedded app is built and looks uh, exactly how it should. But besides those non developer guides, we've also published a whole bunch of how to blogs. Um, so, you know, we've had things for on the messaging side of things um, on our APIs and SDKs. We just started, uh, you know, uh, ramping up our content for contact center for developers. So, you know, this is, we, we have one uh, blog that uh, my colleague Joe did, um, you know, unlocking the power of custom widgets in WebEx contact center. We also did a, uh, you know, webinar on that one previously too, but you're going to, going into 2024, you're going to see a lot more content and blogs on that side of the house. Um, Authentication, that's always like a hot topic for developers, like using OAuth and things like that. Uh, so we added a lot of new how-to stuff around strategies on OAuth. Um, those are usually one of our uh, most popular blogs. So we're always happy to add more content around that to help developers out. Um, we have a bunch of other topics. I think out of this one, I think one of my favorites was uh, how I use ChatGPT to build a WebEx integration. So. Definitely want to check that one out. Um, you know, uh, my manager Adam Weeks did that one. Um, you know, we're living in a new world now, uh, and that was just a really good uh, introduction to how you can use, start using ChatGPT to start building some cool stuff on WebEx. Uh, and um, from our App Hub partners, you know, uh, we we also uh, you know have uh, guest blogs, you know, and then they you know, describe how they built their applications and what you know some of the and give you some of the ideas. So um, you can understand what's being built, you know, uh, on WebEx. Um, so we love it when we have guest blogs coming in from our partners talking about their application and how they built it. So uh, we have a bunch of really cool ones on that side too. Uh, but for those of you who prefer to watch the videos instead of reading, <laughs> the WebEx or developer team also continues to add new vidcasts in a variety of different topics. Um, you know, most of these vidcasts are you know, five to 10 minutes in duration. And so it really just there to provide specific information on a topic or to show you quickly how to do something, you know? Um, sometimes it's just easier to get started just watching someone show you how to do it as opposed to, you know, reading the manual. Um, so, uh, we, you know, we love recording these, so you can start seeing a lot more of these, you know, into 2024. Well, here's some of the highlights on those, uh, you know, so, uh, there's a uh, there's a tab right up on top to, to, for our vidcast collection, and uh, we also uh, try to keep a vidcast collection for our, our calling 
and our contact center people. Uh, so, you know, they're kind of separated out a bit. But if you come over through my portal, they're kind of all aggregated in, into one for in WebEx for developers. Okay. And now uh, for the last of the Slido polls. So which new WebEx for developers update or updates have you already tried out? Oh, contact center. All right. I had a feeling that was going to be the one that was going to lead off. Wow. Quite a variety here. Not bad. Let me see. Mobile SDK. All right. All right. It looks like a bunch of people tried out a, <laughs> several different things already. Kudos to you. Early adopters. That's what I like. Standing in line for the latest thing. All right. And in our last section here, um, you know, some of the other activities that we had here in 2023 uh, are live events. And you might be already aware that we also deliver webinars. Yeah, believe it or not. But, uh, you know, our webinars, you know, are different topics per, uh, pertaining to, uh, you know, anything on WebEx for developer side of things. You know, we aim to deliver a webinar every month. And I think we had some really good sessions here in 2023. Um, you know, we did a couple sessions on WebEx calling. We did a deep dive into buttons and cards for bots. Uh, we showed you, you know, how Adam built an integration with ChatGPT. A lot more than that, too. But, you know. Well, again, like as I mentioned before, we're ramping up more content on the, on the WebEx Contact Center side of things lately. Um, so you can expect more webinars on, uh, on topics on that in 2024. And you can always catch us folks from the WebEx developer team uh, live at these large annual conferences. Um, this is where we were at in 2023. Um, so many of these shows we were presenting live sessions running hands-on workshops, showing up demos in our exhibit space. So if anybody here in the audience makes it to any of these shows, be sure to stop by and see us or stop by one of our sessions or check out our workshops. Uh, you know, while we love doing these virtual webinars, you know, it's also great to, to meet uh, everybody in person. Uh, so uh, these are the shows that we're usually at. We should be at those same shows again in 2024. And uh, before we wrap things up, I just wanted to remind everybody uh, that there's uh, resources available for, for all different things on web, WebEx for Developer. Um, Developer.webex.com is going to be your main spot. But again, developer.webex-cx is where you can find the contact center side of things. Um, we have a, a great uh, community forum. That, uh, so if, if maybe your question isn't uh, something you want to just posed to the uh, support team, but you wanted to kind of throw it out to the community, um, yeah, check out our, our community forums there and get a conversation started there. Uh, we also have a lot of great samples and stuff like that on GitHub and uh, from uh, the official WebEx repository, our, our samples repository, and ones that were submitted from our developer community. And uh, ultimately, you know, like Mutare's uh, app, you know, we have a nice collection of integrations um, to improve your WebEx experience at apphub.webex.com. Okay, so now the fun part is here. We're going to have a little quiz on some of the things that I mentioned in the presentation. And the person who... Um, Answers, the most correct answers in the quickest time will win. So ready, set, go. All right. And I'm going to start the quiz as soon as we get everybody in here. 
Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. What is the WebEx Contact Center for Developers homepage? Pretty sure I mentioned that. Okay. In the correct checks and folks. <laughs> <laughs> What is the new type of WebEx embedded app introduced in 2023 called? Okay, and the correct answer, sidebar, sidebar apps. What new type of WebEx application is ideal for mission critical administrator tasks? Mm. Oh, everybody got that one right. Good job. What a great audience. service apps. What is the current supported version of WebEx buttons and cards released in 2023? Well, this is a tough one. But not too tough for most of this audience. Okay. What is the new maximum resolution for incoming and outgoing video in the browser SDK? Ten eighty P is the correct answer. We're still waiting on eight K. Okay. Are we ready to see the leaderboard? Yeah, let's show it. All let's right. Connie, wow. <laughs> Connie is so smart. <laughs> but I don't know, Adam. I don't think Cisco people are uh, are eligible, right? Just for fun. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to get Connie something special for her. Yeah, but, uh, we're yeah. definitely going to get Connie a prize, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> Congratulations! Yeah, very good job, everybody. All yeah. right, with that. Well, Thank you for participating in the quiz and we'll be sure to get the prize out to our winner. Thank you for joining us today and thank you for your time. Be sure to pop over to our WebEx developer community forum at cs.co forward slash WebEx developer community where you can connect with the WebEx developers and the support team in case you run into any challenges while building or running apps on WebEx. And be sure to join us in 2024 for more fun stuff. And with that, have a wonderful rest of the year. We'll catch you in 2024. Bye. Happy New Year.